Hey guys, it's just me. I figured I'd color myself and talk about me today. I was born and then I died t twice. They didn't know what was wrong with me. They just kept taking blood, kept taking blood, taking more blood. Until finally my dad told them to stop because they were killing me, of course. And then... I was like a human pin cushion, needles from head to toe, living on a machine for several weeks at the hospital, and then they moved me to the house, and I stayed in my living room on a machine for three months. No one could touch me, no one could do anything but watch me. Um, I guess, I don't remember. It's just what I was told. And then, when I was four, I sat down at the chair, watching TV. I was zoned out. And my brother said that there was a giant rattlesnake under the couch, which was right beside me. I just stayed there in the chair and watched TV and he ran to the neighbors and got the neighbor and came back and they killed the snake. When my dad got home that night, we moved. No hesitation, no second guessing, we just packed up and we moved. When I was six, we moved into a really nice house. It was about two stories, yet it was built on an Indian graveyard. Me and my brothers and sisters would see ghosts and we'd run to my parents' room and that's where we stayed most nights. Until one day, I was still six. We packed up and went to Missouri. When we got back, the house was burnt. I left my teddy bear, which was really, really important to me. And lots of other little things, pictures, Things like that that just burned up in the fire. After that, they put me on Ritalin and all kinds of other things because I was very upset. They didn't know what was wrong with me. My dad took me to several priests. I got baptized. Lots of other things. And I just stared at the wall for hours and hours. Just watching what I thought I saw. Were things in the walls like dancing. Doing all kinds of things. Like a circus. So they took me off Ritalin. By the time I turned six... I would wake up screaming in my living room from the nightmares that I was having. My dreams were of the devil. And then I had like demons coming out of the couch. It was very scary considering I woke up in the living room and my dream was in the living room. I had that for about a year until I turned seven. When I turned seven, we moved and things actually looked like it was getting better. I wasn't on anything anymore. They took me off of everything. They thought that maybe that was my problem. 
course, half the time my uncles and cousins would steal with anyway, so I couldn't even take it, even if I wanted to. They're a bunch of druggies. Um, when I turned 13, that was like the worst year of my life. Because I thought the love of my life left and I wanted to die, literally. I got into my mom's heartburn, or heart pills, not heartburn, but heart pills that she had to take because she stayed on a bed for three months because of all her medicine and stuff she had to take. I just went in there and I grabbed it all and aspirins and anything I could find and a Dr. Pepper and I took it all with the Dr. Pepper. I was sick for like three days. I didn't die, but I was sick for three days. I was throwing up everywhere. Yeah, my mom made me go to school the next day anyway. Until she got called to come get me because I threw up all over myself. <laughs> my friends were like, oh my gosh, you're so sick. <laughs> I was like, yeah, I know. And then my mom felt really bad because when she pulled me up or picked me up, she had to pull over because I had to throw up again. And she knew I was sick. I couldn't drink Dr. Pepper forever after that because it was just so nasty to me. Just the smell made me want to bark. It was like years before I could touch Dr. Pepper. <sighs> But that Christmas, still 13, that Christmas, I was just standing at the door and I thought I seen something, like a UFO or something like that, because it wasn't a star and it was really, really close to the trees and to the house. I just stared at it while it just went really slow. I was like, well, it is Christmas Eve. Maybe it's Santa Claus. <laughs> and I went to bed. The next morning I got up and went over to my cousin's house. I didn't even care it was Christmas. I watched them all open their presents. <sighs> I went back home, opened mine. And then I just watched TV in my room. was like the worst year ever because not only did all that happen but my sister's husband actually tried something with me but I told him to get out and if he didn't I was going to tell my sister so he left and then whenever I was 16 I went and stayed with my sister not very smart on my part but I just wanted to go away from my mom and dad because they were getting a divorce. My mom was getting remarried to somebody else and I didn't want to be around them. So I just went and stayed with my sister. Whenever she went to work, because she worked nights, I guess her ex-husband got really high. And his friend passed out in the chair. My sister's mom, because she's only half-sister, was in the bedroom I was on the couch and he tried something again only this time it was pretty bad the next morning when my sister got there she got me up and we talked and I told her everything and we left we went to my cousins in Harrison which we weren't living there. We were living about an hour and a half away. And she called my mom and I took a I took a bath, which I shouldn't have, but I felt so disgusted I, I needed a bath. And uh, my mom took me to the hospital 
But before we went, my sister was pretty much, my other sister, was pretty much calling me a liar and that I was just doing it for attention and I just broke down and started crying and then everybody was just shocked and she, my mom took me straight to the hospital the doctor said they found some stuff so and I had to put out a report to the police um, it was just a big mess a little while later my mom asked me if I wanted to keep pressing charges and send them to prison. Of course, I said no, because I thought of my niece and nephew. They needed their dad. So, he didn't go to prison. Instead, I, right after that, he got into a really bad motorcycle accident and he was in a coma for three months I figure that was God or karma one of the two after that my sister divorced him and then she got with another guy and so I went and stayed with her again we went to one of their friends' house and played pool. Had a pretty good time, I thought, until about the end of it. He was pretty much flirting with me the whole time, and my sister got jealous, and we left. And I told her I was sorry, and she said, it's not my fault. He's just an asshole. And I went home, back to my dad's after that. My life has been nothing but pretty much pure hell. <laughs> um, after that, I just started hanging out at my dad's and hanging out with friends. <clears throat> and then I met Mike through Lee of course she was one of my friends and he swore up and down they weren't together she said that they were but he was just pretty much staying there to help her grandma he said so he didn't really want to be with Lee, and so he moved out, he moved over to his friend's house, stayed in the camper, I guess, for a little while, until him and his friend got a trailer together that they rented, and not long after that, I moved in. Of course, at this time, I was 17, and I really really thought I loved him, which I mean I did. I married him, had two kids. And looking back at it now, I wish I didn't. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it.